Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are checking out the new Core i9 9900KS processor from Intel. This probably isn't going to be a very long or detailed video for two reasons. Uh, firstly, we're going through a rough period right now, having just lost fellow tech YouTuber and good friend Kevin from Tech Showdown. I had already shot most of this video, but I just wanted to update this introduction and I'll dedicate our next big benchmark video to Kev as he really did enjoy those. And this also seems to be another one of those rather pointless Intel products like the Core i7 8086K that we never bothered to look at. Okay, so along with our review sample, the Australian marketing company that represents Intel emailed us what Intel calls a news bite. I guess that works in place of a review guide as there probably isn't enough content here to make one of those. Anyway, in this news bite, Intel was quick to address what's new as the first paragraph begins with what's new in bold text. In short, they say that the new processor delivers up to a five gigahertz all-core turbo frequency. It's a limited special edition. Uh, pricing will start at $513 US and it'll be available beginning October 30th. So no surprises there. This is just a 1900K with MC enabled. Intel's raised their already meaningless TDP figure to 127 watts as the base clock has increased to four gigahertz. But of course you will require a cooler rated to dissipate well over 200 watts if you hope to achieve maximum performance at a reasonable temperature. And just quickly, a personal gripe of mine that I'd like to touch on is the fact that instead of sending reviewers actual retail models, Intel's sending qualification samples. I know they're generally the same as retail chips, but how hard is it for Intel to send reviewers genuine retail chips that you, the viewer, will actually be buying? Anyway, the good news is we've managed to get our hands on a retail version, so I've used that exclusively for all our testing. And I guess we should be happy that Intel's at least provided retail packaging. As far as I recall, that's never happened before, so they are slowly learning, guys. Now, because this is a limited edition processor, the warranty has been slashed from the standard three years to just 12 months. So already I have to say that's left me with a pretty bad taste in my mouth. Basically, you're looking at having to spend at least 5% more for a CPU that is going to be around 6% faster out of the box, or I guess no faster if you were to buy a 1900K and leave MC enabled. Anyway, apart from a factory overclock that most motherboards were already performing themselves, there appears to be nothing really that new here. So yeah, before we get to the benchmarks, just a few quick notes on the test system. For testing the 8th and 9th gen core processors, we're using the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra, which has been flashed to the latest F9 BIOS revision, and that features Gigabyte's new overhauled BIOS design and layout. And yeah, it looks pretty good and it works very well. Oh, and also for cooling, I'll be using the new Gigabyte Aorus Liquid Cooler, their 360 millimeter version. And while I am yet to do any serious cooling comparisons with the usual suspects, it did do a good job of cooling the 1900KS. Something else I should note was the fact that the 1900KS ran at an all-core clock frequency of 5.1 gigahertz on the Aorus Ultra, not the up to five gigahertz it's advertised to run at. This was the stock configuration on the Aorus Ultra using the latest BIOS and enabling MCE changed nothing. The reason for this extra 100 megahertz was down to the fact that the board forced a base clock frequency of 102 megahertz. So this means our results might be a percent or two higher for the 9900KS than they should be, but we're gonna go ahead and test with this out of the box configuration. I know that might upset a few people, but we're talking about a margin of error type difference, one to 2%. So it's not gonna skew the results too badly. Certainly given more time, I would like to check the behavior of other Z390 motherboards with the 9900KS, but for now I simply don't have time. So with that out of the way, let's take a quick look at some of the benchmarks and I'll give you my thoughts. Starting with Cinebench R20, we have the multi-core results and here the 1900KS was 8% faster than the 1900K and that meant that it was able to overtake the Ryzen 7 3800X by a 6% margin. Crucially though, it was a whopping 26% slower than the Ryzen 9 3900X. Then we see for lightly threaded workloads, the performance difference is much smaller, just a 3% improvement in the Cinebench single core test. Interestingly, we see just a 1% performance improvement over the 1900K when testing with WinRAR. Still, that does make the 1900KS the fastest mainstream platform desktop CPU, at least until the 3950X is released next month. Here we see another insignificant performance gain, this time when looking at the seven zip compression test. 
Again, just a 1% performance improvement. That said, when measuring performance using the decompression test, we do find that the 1900KS is 7% faster than the original 1900K, though that still makes it 5% slower than the 3900X. We see a 6% reduction in render time with Premiere Pro, and this allowed the 9900KS to match the 3700X, but it still took 13% longer than the 3900X. Testing with the V-Ray benchmark shows a 5% improvement for the 9900KS, but that meant it was still 23% slower than the 3900X. The Corona render time was reduced by 4%, down to 92 seconds, but again this meant the 9900KS took 20% longer to complete the workload when compared to AMD's Ryzen 9 3900X. Here we see the 9900KS offering a 7% reduction in render time when compared to the standard 9900K, and that meant it took 30% longer than the 3900X. So obviously if your workload can take advantage of more than 8 cores, the Ryzen 9 processor will be a better choice. And here we see, despite taking 30% longer than the 3900X to complete the Blender test, the 9900KS pushed total system consumption 26% higher. That's pretty crazy. Fully unleashed without TDP restrictions, the 9900K was already a super power hungry CPU. But the 9900KS sucks down a lot more power for what amounts to only a very minor performance gain. So needless to say, efficiency really isn't great here. Moving on to a few games, and please note, for all the testing, we have used the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and previously, the 1900K was the fastest tested CPU in this title, a mere 4% faster than the 3900X. The 1900KS advances the Core i9's position by a few frames, making it just 3% faster than the standard 9900K. We see a very similar thing in Battlefield 5. In fact, the gains here are even less impressive as we see just a 2% performance uplift. As expected, the 1900KS is the fastest CPU on this title, but how well you'll notice a difference between 155 FPS and 171 FPS. Well, not sure on that one. I guess I'll have to leave that up to you to decide. Here we see a 3% performance uplift, and that meant that the 9900KS was on par with the 9700K, which does a little better than the standard 1900K due to its lack of hyper-threading support, which can be a burden in this title depending on the core count. Lastly, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and just a single extra frame can be seen when comparing the 9900KS to the 9900K, so I think that really will do it for the benchmarks. Something I haven't touched on yet is overclocking and temperatures, so let's quickly talk about that. Like my original 1900K chip provided by Intel, uh, this 1900KS, uh, the retail one that is, the, the 1900KS retail chip that we tested, uh, that also was stuck at 5.2 gigahertz. So yeah, that was on the Z390 Aorus Ultra. With a bit more tweaking, it might be possible to get it stable in heavy workloads, but I'm almost certain 5.3 gigahertz is completely out of the question. Not that long ago, Gigabyte provided us with their insane Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force motherboard, which came with a hand-picked 1900K, though that processor was also limited to 5.2 GHz and ran considerably cooler at 5.1 GHz thanks to a massive reduction in voltage. Still, our 9900KS ran all cores at 5.1 GHz by default on the Aorus Ultra, and temperatures using an all-in-one liquid cooler were reasonable. So I guess paying the small price premium for the 9900KS if you're after a high performance version of the 9900K isn't terrible, though the one year warranty kind of sucks. But still, if you already happen to be in the market for a Core i9 9900K processor and you're keen to overclock it to the max, then sure, I guess the 9900KS makes sense. For those of you wondering why this CPU exists at all, I think the main reason Intel released the 9900KS was to try and generate some hype around their processors. Right now, it's really only their high-end models such as the 9900K that make any kind of sense in my opinion. And that's because AMD has without question slayed the Core i5 and i3 range with their second and third generation Ryzen parts, and I think that's something we can probably all agree on, or at least it should be. Parts such as the Core i7 8700K, 9700K, and the Core i9 9900K, as well as the various K revisions such as the KF and now the KS, uh, they're all suitable for extreme high-end gaming rigs, the kind of systems rocking, you know, an RTX 2080 Super, for example. 
But for those of you with a more modest graphics card and desire to do things outside of gaming, I'd strongly recommend checking out AMD's third gen Ryzen series. For me, something like the 3900X really is the ultimate all-rounder. That is, if you can afford to spend a little over $500 US on your CPU. Though I should also note that AMD CPUs do work perfectly well with the 2080 Super or the TI model, especially under realistic gaming conditions. There you won't really notice any difference between something like the 3900X and the 1900K, and we've shown this in previous videos. And in fact, there are even some titles where the AMD processors are faster. Anyway, I think for most of you, Intel's Core i9 1900KS is going to be a bit of a non-event and personally if I were in the market for such a processor I'd just save a few bucks and get the year old Core i9 9900K. Worst case if you get a dud there it'll be a few hundred megahertz slower but you'll have two years extra on your warranty. And that's going to do it for this one. As I said not our most in-depth review ever but I wasn't exactly in the mood to finish this content uh, but I think we have finished it to a satisfactory level for yeah particularly for a product refresh. I would just like to thank everyone who supported our GoFundMe campaign for Kevin. We have reached our goal, so that's fantastic. I'd also like to thank everyone who's left messages on our videos, Kevin's videos, Twitter, and just all the other social media. It's been great. The, the level of support has been incredible. Uh, yeah, it's really moving. Really appreciate all you guys and just so proud to be part of this community. And I just wish Kev got a chance to see it. He'd be absolutely overwhelmed by the response. Anyway, thank you everyone. I'm your host, Steve. Stay safe, and I'll see you again next time.